Hi, and thank you for joining us. Well, with just three days until the 10th anniversary of the terror attacks in New York City, the U.S. Department of Homeland Security released a statement this evening saying intelligence officials have received what they call credible but unconfirmed information about possible attacks leading up to this Sunday. Now, White House Press Secretary Jay Carney said the president is aware of the information and that law enforcement officials are taking every precaution. This weekend, the world marks the day that defined a generation, 9-11. Commemorations will be held around the globe for the terror attacks seen live around the world. And the two cities that were rocked the most, New York and Washington, are under alert for another potential terror attack. We begin with the latest on the riots in the UK. Today, the British Prime Minister told police to use every action necessary to restore order as an uprising spreads from London to other cities. The situation is bad enough for Ottawa to issue a travel advisory for Britain. And our Foreign Affairs Department is urging the thousands of Canadians living in that country to be vigilant and avoid all protests and gatherings. Tonight, we're going to find out more about exactly what's happening in England from the people who were there and have witnessed some of the violence and destruction. To Libya, where a major snag is being reported in negotiations between rebels and Gaddafi loyalists. A rebel spokesperson reports that talks have failed as Muammar Gaddafi remains in hiding. Stephanie Gost filed this report earlier from Tripoli while there was still hope. Well, this was a day of remembrance after a horrific weekend at the Indiana State Fair where a stage collapsed on concert goers, killing five and leaving more than 40 others hurt. Wendy Wolfolk says turnout was solid for the memorial. 60 minutes tonight here on CHCH. What makes Julian Assange tick? Well, Steve Croft has a one-on-one -on -one interview with the controversial WikiLeaks founder. Then at 9, 2020 has a special on The Sixth Sense. It's something a Miami investigator had when investigating the vicious attack of a young woman. And that intuition paid off. That's tonight at 9 on CHCH. Now, Brad Pitt, George Clooney alone have enough star power to get hordes of fans out to this year's festival. And you'd think that a celebs like Pitt and Clooney would be hard to top. Well, not quite. Just call in the world's biggest band, U2, to make an appearance on TIFF's opening night, and you've pretty much turned Toronto into Tinseltown. Well, Brad Pitt... Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Brad Pitt is being recognized for a different kind of role today, a lifesaver. It's the return of the boy bands tonight at Cobb's Coliseum. New Kids on the Block and Backstreet Boys are back. So you got to give us some dirt. Who's more the jokester out of the group, and who's more the serious one? Oh... Um, the jokester? I mean, Joe always gets the label of the jokester because he has, because he is a jokester and he's kind of sarcastic and funny, um, you know, but we all, we all, we, we all, like a lot of people say, who's the diva and a lot of, you know, I think, I think at different times we all have d diva -ism. Oh, diva-ism. Diva -ism. You heard it first right here on CHCH. <laughs> all right, Matt's here. We are talking all things entertainment and I hear there's some news about sex in the city. You know what? I always liked the show. I loved and, the show. Well, it's geared That's towards. That's cool that you like. Well, it I know it's geared towards women, but I I always enjoyed it. And uh, I like you even I'm, more now. I'm not <laughs> I'm not really a man's man, as we all know. <laughs> and I have to say a funny story very quickly mm -hmm. before they tell me I have to stop talking. Vernon okay. Wells in Toronto. Yes. Uh, years ago, when he was here, all right. my husband's favorite player. We had a fish named Bernie. Oh my God! You know he's making twenty-six million. <laughs> Not bad. And those Bernie numbers? didn't live very long. Oh, All right, okay. that's our time for right now. <laughs> Matt Hayes will be back in just Poor a couple Bernie. minutes there, with our seven-day weather forecast. <laughs> well, finally tonight, a Sunday without an end in Indiana. This is also satisfactory. This is my dream. Volunteers put together the world's longest ice cream dessert. Yep, I would like to be a part of that one. Oh yep. man. Sounds my like Jason likes hurting. it too. No, no, it's making my stomach ill. Yeah. You know really? what? You, you don't, know what? You I don't got like issues. That? I got sharing issues. Too I don't want to eat it at a trough. <laughs> too many calories. Yeah, yeah. that too. Yeah. Oh. I'll eat that I need my anything. own bowl. I need a separate <laughs> bowl. Wow, you two are divas. Oh, yeah. All right, that's the edition of the <laughs> Evening News tonight. We're back at 11.